You are listening to We Saw the Devil, an investigative and conversational true crime podcast that deep dives into fascinating criminal cases that are solved, unsolved, or ongoing. From America's Lori Vallow to Germany's Armin Mivas, we examine and discuss the world's most shocking cases. If you're enjoying the show, don't forget to follow us online. Check us out at WeSawTheDevil.com and we saw the Devil on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget, you can become part of the show by backing us on Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Robin. And it's Jackie. And let's go ahead and get this out of the way first, because we've gotten a couple tweets and emails and Facebook comments. If you are binging Netflix's crime scene, Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, you are not crazy. You are not. Because, yes, there are three clips from We Saw the Devil from our podcast from where we covered the Elisa Lamb case. This is something that we've known about for months now, but we weren't at liberty to discuss or divulge. And so it's really, really exciting that now we can say that we made the cut. We made the cut. Our podcast has now been on Netflix. We have Netflix entitlements. Is that what we (laughs) call it? I don't even feel like I'm dressed for this moment. Um, I would like to thank the fans (laughs) and the Academy. No, but thank you so much to everyone who reached out. Um, Also, our patrons. It was so adorable and cute that our patrons were just rushing the day that it came out. And they're like, oh, my God. Our patrons knew that we were going to be in it. A handful of you sent us video clips before (laughs) we even got to watch it. I was like, wait, what? We didn't know we actually made the cut until we got these videos coming in from you guys. And I love it. I was like, wait what? We're in it? Oh my god. And then I watched it. Um, Yeah, it was really fun. And you guys are really awesome. And thank you so much for the support and the kind words and everything. It's, it's a really cool thing. You know what I mean? And it's pretty cool to have my name in the credits. And yeah, our podcast now, you know, as seen on Netflix. So as seen on it's a really cool feeling as seen on TV. Let's get some housekeeping out of the way first. Um, you already know where you can find us on social media. So now is the time. It is the 12th, guys. Our Patreon gift of the month is going out here shortly. Don't forget, if you're liking the show, loving the show, you can support us on Patreon. Uh, for as little as $3 a month, you can get things like stickers, goodies, merch, extended access, access to our Patreon-only Facebook group. If you become an executive producer, which is $25 a month or up, you can come on the show and do an episode with us about your favorite true crime case. That's patreon.com forward slash we saw the devil. And you can support us for as little as $3 a month. So yeah, this has been, you know, honestly, guys, we never really record late on Friday evenings, but I feel like today is news day. Compelling. <laughs> it was pretty compelling. And in news that we were in no way anticipating, I mean, no, seriously, imagine our surprise when this notification popped up on my phone and then started being posted in multiple Lori Vallow case groups that I'm in. And I'm a meander, right? So I'm walking around and all of a sudden I see on, you know, Robin's screen that there's a video. Mm-hmm. So Emma Daybell, tongue sticker outer extraordinaire, did an interview with Court TV. Yeah, no, she really did an interview. <laughs> I know. A- answered questions. <laughs> Beyond just facial expressions. Yeah, no, big deal, guys. And I mean, it's not, this was not even on my top 50 list of things that I expected at all. There is actually a lot to unpack here. And even though there were just a few minutes of footage from that Court TV aired, there is actually a lot to go through. And what we would also like to do is because we've been covering this case for well over a year now, is to kind of backtrack and for people who may be new to the case or not as familiar with the case, go over a really kind of quick outline as far as what all led up to this um, with Tammy Daybell's death. Of course, if you would like, please feel free. We have covered this step by step since the beginning of everything. Um, But we're going to kind of go through a brief synopsis of everything now. Starting back now, this Emma Daybell spoke to Court TV about her mom and Tammy, because obviously Tammy Daybell's autopsy just came back, but it's not available to public, right? Tammy Daybell married Chad Daybell in 1991, and they both attended the same high school. And Chad was two grades above Tammy and was a class clown. Now, on his website, Chad wrote about this, and he said, quote, Despite this, Tammy still admired me from afar in the school halls. While I was on my mission, she even told her friends, quote, I'm going to date Chad Daybell when he gets home. He's so full of himself. Narcissism much? Like, holy crap. 
I think that one sentence above anything that I've read on Chad really tells me who he is. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I and you know, that actually never went away. It always stuck with me. Whenever yeah. I see that smug potato face, I don't know, like hungry man potato face. Yeah. I'm just like, oh no, that's all I can think of. He's just that, that person. He's yeah. That, yeah, he's that person. She admired me. I'm like, sir, you are not Brad Pitt or Jason Momoa. You stop it. Perform a stop it. So he and Tammy ended up dating, and Tammy, remember, is the one who got Chad the cemetery sexton job. Uh, They both completed school, and Chad worked at the cemetery while writing his LDS End of Days fiction books. He was, you know, he was a beginning author at this point. The two of them eventually established their own publishing company, Spring Creek Book, in March of 2004. Now, Chad published his books through his own company, and Tammy took care of the financials, marketing, etc., They had five children, one of whom is obviously Emma Daybell. In the summer of 2017, don't forget, Chad met Melanie Gibb at an LDS author camp out in northern Utah. They became friends, and Chad, at her request, went to Mesa, Arizona for another conference. And this is also when the first Preparing a People podcast episode aired with the title, Is Rexburg the Promised Land? I mean, is it? <laughs> I want to know. I've been there. I guess I've been to the promised land. I can fully say feel? that. Um, do you feel Do you feel saved? Do you feel promised? I feel a little <laughs> cleansed. Um, no, I don't feel any different. Sorry. In January of 2019, Chad was a guest interview on a new Preparing a People episode. That one was titled Time to Warrior Up. Now, this is the big one. Um, Those guests included Jason Mao, Melanie Gebb, and Lori Vallow. Jason Mao, Mao. Jason Mao. Now, during this time, uh, Melanie Gibb later testified that Chad and Lori were having an affair. If you recall the preliminary hearing where Melanie Gibb testified for like over a day. I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it was very long. Very long. I mean, for a preliminary hearing, it was unusual. We've said this before. Mm -hmm. It's true. She testified at that preliminary hearing that Chad and Lori were having a steamy affair. She claimed that they kissed, held hands, and walked around BYU-Idaho's track. And Lori had moved to Rexburg and was living nearby in a townhouse complex. And if you recall, too, also living in the same complex was Lori's brother, Alex Cox. Are you with us so far? Yeah, I'm here. (laughs) Now, Tammy became suspicious of an affair and apparently confronted Chad about this on an unknown date. So Tammy was suspicious, but we don't know when she confronted Chad about it. September of 2019, Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow disappeared in September of 2019. We now know that they were murdered and buried on Daybell's property on September 9th and 23rd, respectively. J.J. Vallow was found deceased and wrapped in duct tape and plastic. Tylee Ryan had been entirely dismembered, and they found pieces of her skull as well as charred flesh. Now, those autopsies have not been either completed or released to the public yet. And it's just so heinously sad. Something tells me they've been completed, just not released. Right. I mean, gut instinct. I have been a true crime junkie my entire life. No, that was not an endorsement of crime junkies. Just had to put that out there. And this case actually is unique in the sense that I followed it from the beginning when, you know, this, this case caught my eye because I was on Huffington Post reading something And there was a banner ad, Where Are the Children? And it was a picture of Tylee and JJ on the bottom right corner of my screen. I was like, well, where are the children? Let me click this and see. And it just stuck with me. I was like, wow, all of these weird pieces started coming together. And the mom and the dad won't bring, you know, the mom, uh, Lori Vallow, won't produce them. And And then she ended up in Hawaii. Yeah. And she's in Hawaii with this new man whose wife just died. And then her husband died mysteriously. And so that's how the mystery began. Finding out the children were murdered, it it actually impacted me fairly deeply on an emotional level after following this case, talking to their family members, hearing stories. I mean, it's just, it has had a huge emotional impact on me. So this is why we continue to do and cover this case to the degree that we do. I think the hardest part for me was finding out how many people who had so much hope that they could still be alive Mm -hmm. and like hiding at a like some sort of weird doomsday compound Mm -hmm. and they weren't at the compound, you know, and when that kind of came to fruition, that was murder. I mean... It, it's just sad. So many of you were so devastated. And I was there right along with you, you know, and the vi- the candlelight vigils and mm-hmm. the memorials. And then somebody had taken it down and the cupcakes. I mean, yeah, it's I so the, sad. The cupcakes from Albertson where the children. Yeah. You know, as so many people in Rexburg had hope. And we joke about Rexburg frequently. 
Jackie did go there uh, last year, last March. We joke about Rexburg, but you know, the community really, really rallied around these kids. And it has had a huge impact on the community and the people in it. So it was heartbreaking. And I remember the morning that the kids were found, we kind of got a tip off, um, knew early before it had been released to the media. Even recording that podcast episode, like I actually choked back tears a couple of times because, you know, regardless of how into true crime you are, you know that there's a reason that the show The First 48 exists. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, you know, we all knew what likely what had likely transpired, but no one, none none of us really wanted to believe it. So no, I mean, unless it happens, you don't want it to be right. Exactly. This case is, is really, you know, kind of kind of personal for us. Well, and um, a lot of a lot that we have a lot of fans who are mothers and a lot of fans who are fathers who were like, how could you do that? Mm-hmm. What the hell has happened to these children? Mm-hmm. Everyone is waiting for Tylee and JJ's autopsies to come out, be released. But that is what happened with that. Yeah, I'm really interested in seeing those and hearing about it. Same. It's going to be very excruciatingly sad, but it will be definitely interesting nonetheless. It will be. On October 9th of 2019, Tammy Daybell, if you recall, had a very strange encounter at her home. And I'm just going to go ahead and read her Facebook post that she made on this day. She said, okay, neighbors, something really weird just happened. And I want you to know so you can watch out. I had gotten home and parked in our front driveway. As I was getting stuff out of the back seat, A guy wearing a ski mask was suddenly standing by the back of my car with a paintball gun. He shot at me several times, although I don't think it was loaded. I yelled for Chad and he ran off around the back of my house. I have no idea what his motive was and he never spoke, even after I asked him several times what he thought he was doing. I was about to smack him with my freezer meals from enrichment tonight when I decided to yell for Chad instead. So that was on October 9th of 2019, there was a suspicious encounter. Two things. Jackie, you have been to Chad Daybell's property. Yes. Where would this masked person have gone? There's really nowhere to hide. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) there's nowhere to hide. It's a lot of farmland. And so the nature of farmland is no trees, no bushes, really. It's just flat land for the most part. Yeah. And, you know, there's some like there's the if you have the time, if you haven't seen the property, you can find it all over the place. Yeah. Pictures. And I mean, even Google Earth, you can see it. I mean, there are a couple trees dotting the property, but it's pretty wide open. Yeah. And there's a road there and it's fairly traveled, I think. So that was one of the very first encounters. And it has been widely speculated that Alex Cox could have been that masked person. Because don't forget, at this point, Alex Cox was still alive and living in Rexburg with Lori. I wish I had more detail of like what her actual eyewitness account was of where this person went and stuff. I know. Uh, and correction, not living with Lori, but living in the same townhouse complex as Lori. Yeah, Just wanted weird. to make that, sh- that clear. Just 10 days later, after this particular encounter, Tammy passed away in her Salem home. Chad Daybell declined an autopsy. And her viewing was just two days later, and then she was buried on Tuesday morning. It took only four days between Tammy Daybell dying and then being buried. Now, nine days after Tammy's death, Chad published an article titled Moving into the Second Half of My Life. And he posted this in the LDS Avow Global Initiative newsletter. Now, for those of you who are not aware, Avow stands for Another Voice of Warning, And it's very similar. It's LDS, doomsday, prepper, um, more of the fringe elements of the LDS faith. And again, I emphasize more fringe. Yeah, and it's stuff that would get people excommunicated. A lot of it is, yes. An excerpt from his particular essay that he wrote says, quote, My dear wife Tammy passed away in her sleep early Saturday, October 19th. When I awoke at around 6 a.m., it was clear she had been gone for several hours. It came as a shock. I couldn't believe I hadn't been awakened somehow, but all indications are that her spirit simply slipped away during the night. Her face looked serene with her eyes closed and a slight smile. It was devastating to discover her that way, but I'm so grateful that her death was peaceful. Now, Chad received roughly $430,000 from multiple life insurance policies that were on Tammy. In fact, he, quote, significantly increased one particular policy shortly before her death. 
Yeah, so that's suspicious. And if you're following along and listening to our other episodes, I'm currently doing a series on Pam Hup where life insurance policy plays a very key role. So if you are not listening to that, I highly suggest you do because it rivals Lori Vallow on the level of craziness. Five days later, Chad married Lori Vallow on a Hawaii beach. Now, we've all seen those pictures. Um, They're dressed in white. They're wearing lace. It's a Hawaiian theme. They're dancing and smiling. If we didn't know who these two assholes were and what had transpired at this point, it would actually be kind of adorable. Well, it actually doesn't. It's still, it's like what does not belong still to me. Like, Chad is not her type. No. You can just tell. It's weird. But they returned to Rexburg after their wedding, and then the investigation into the children's disappearance eventually began. And again, you can listen to our previous episodes on this case to get up to date on how all of that played out. So multiple things here. Let's talk about Court TV first. Chanley Painter from Court TV reached directly out to Emma Daybell once news hit last week that Tammy Daybell's autopsy, her mom, had been completed. Now, this is the first time that Emma has spoken to the media, which is huge. Yeah, we haven't really seen much of her for a while. Uh Uh-uh, at all. In fact, we all remember that infamous incident where she pulled up to her home and was making faces and sticking her tongue out at reporters. That is not a way, if you are surrounded by cult rumors, if people aren't sure if you are a cultist, if your father potentially killed your mother and potentially killed little children, That is not the way to act. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. (laughs) But it's it's so like, what's funny is that that became a defining blemish Uh of who she became in the eyes of everybody. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, let's say like, let's err on the side of caution and let's say maybe it was a fluke. Maybe she just was having a bad day or a weird day. We don't know. But this was different. This was a different side we got to see of her. It was. It very much was. She says that she found out that her mom's autopsy was complete via the news. She called the Fremont County Sheriff's Office because she wanted to see it before it was released to the media. Because as you know, Tammy Daybell's autopsy, we received word that it was completed, but it's not released, right? It hasn't been made public yet. So that makes sense. She wanted to see what happened, right? What the results were. That's what she's entitled to. Absolutely. They told her that they would review the results with her if she and her siblings came in to answer a few questions from with detectives. Chanley from Court TV asked what that agreement entailed. And apparently they just don't want her really to talk to about it with other people. And again, Emma Daybell said that they just want her and her siblings to come in and talk to detectives. I mean, coming from my perspective, how hard would that be? (laughs) If I were in her shoes, I would be like, yes, please, name a time and date and place, and I will drag my whole ham damn fam down to that station. Did my dad kill my mom, you know, is what I hear every time that I've thought about that. Uh Like, when she was answering the questions of, I just want to know. All of us have been really anxious waiting. Yeah. And these are feelings that we haven't heard from her side. I mean, we got one, like, Reddit post off of her. Which we will get there in this episode, too. (laughs) If you haven't heard about her Reddit post, we're going to go over that, right? Mm-hmm. So, and and that's something that we haven't gotten. We, we've just seen this, like, socially inappropriate childish woman, woman who, well, isn't she a teacher? She, yeah, she was a teacher of an elementary, she's an elementary school teacher. I mean, but she, we got to feel bad for somebody like this. She just lost her mother, and she literally lost her father. Mm-hmm. Now, she went on to say that Tammy's parents, so her grandparents, Tammy's parents, they are alive. And they have also not been able to see this autopsy report. And again, Emma said that they've all been caught off guard by it all. They weren't even notified by the sheriff's department that Tammy was going to be exhumed until two weeks after the fact. It's so weird. They've kept everything so under wraps and just doing stuff. And and, and these people are dragged through the motions because they she didn't commit a crime. You know, to our knowledge, she hasn't committed a crime. Right. And then all of this, and they've just been dragged through the mud publicly. I mean, obviously, she's a Reddit user, which we'll get to in a moment. It's just, it's incredibly sad. You know, she said that they all feel alone. She said, our mom is dead. Our dad is in jail. And we just really want to see this autopsy report. And Emma did make a claim towards the end and said, quote, there is a lot of false information circulating in the news about the passing of my mother. And then Chanley from Court TV pressed her on this. And she said, you know, can you tell us more about this false information? 
And Emma would not go into details. She just, again, doubled down and said that she wanted to see those autopsy results. So she showed me that she wasn't completely dumb. And that sucks because I want to hear it. Right. <laughs> like, be like, please be dumb and tell everyone. What, what is it? You know? Like, right. We want to know. Even if we're not supposed to know, tell us. So then Chanley Painter reached out to Lynn Humphreys, the Fremont County Sheriff. And he said that he wasn't aware of the requirements because he's not the one doing the interviews. And he does feel that the family has the right to know about you know, what is in that autopsy report. Apparently, this you know, almost bargaining quid pro quo type of stuff that th- they're doing with, over this autopsy report, with Tammy's autopsy report, is somewhat common. This is an active investigation. We need you to cooperate with us and give us some information and answer some questions, and then we will give you this information that you would like. So It sounds like bargaining, right? It is. In terms of Emma, and back to what you were saying, Jackie, when you brought up that Reddit post. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead and read her Reddit post. It's not very long. And this was posted in 2019 under the name E. Daybell. The username was E. Daybell. So that's pretty clear considering the content. It says, My mother passed away on October 19th, 2019. The coroner told us natural causes. It looked like the textbook definition of heart failure. The death was unexpected and my family has taken it hard. My dad has already remarried. A friend of the family lost her husband earlier this year, and for whatever reason, she and my dad decided to tie the knot. It feels weird, but I already had a positive relationship with my new stepmom, and she has helped our family grieve. It's definitely a weird marriage. Both still talk of their former spouses frequently. My dad misses my mother terribly. A few neighbors, led by my aunt and our small town, have decided that since my dad remarried so quickly, he murdered my mother. This started out as a benign, though hurtful, rumor. It has escalated to the point, however, that they exhumed my mom's body for an autopsy. The family had no warning. We went to visit her grave and her body had been dug up. I don't know the results of the autopsy yet, but I feel extremely violated. I just want to grieve. I'm hurt that my aunt would cause so much trouble. Has anyone else experienced anything like this? I feel so alone. I don't know if everyone knows about this. I feel like a lot of you who are like super into this case probably definitely know about that post. But Mm -hmm. it just really makes you hate Chad and Lori even more. Not only do these people kill children, but they impact other children, Mm -hmm. their own other children, and then destroy the rest of these people's lives. Like, it really impacts everybody around them. And not only did it impact all of, like, Rexburg, because seriously, Rexburg was rocked, you know, that this even happened. And it was just so insane. It is. Hearing Emma Dable speak in court TV in this very brief interview, you know, I think it's hard for many of us to reconcile the two Emma Daybells. And by that, I mean her past public behaviors, tongue sticking out, the faces, but also how she must feel internally. It's odd because we've actually seen some exposure of her inner feelings Mm -hmm. when typically someone has a public appearance and that's odd and you don't hear anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it's like, oh, just breaking news, like Emma Daybell's being a freak show. Yeah, that's (laughs) pretty much what it was. Yeah, and that's all you see. And it's, it's interesting to get the human side. Her mom died, which I know that intrafamilial relationships differ between families, but I'm sure that was incredibly devastating for her. My own mom, as all of you know who listen to us, my mom just passed away a month and a half ago, and I still cry on a very regular basis, like damn near daily basis over it. By all accounts, she and Tammy were also incredibly close. They worked at the same school together. All of Tammy's co-workers and friends said Tammy only talked about her kids. That was the most closely knit family they knew. And with this Reddit post in particular, you can feel her pain and confusion. She went out on a limb and made a random Reddit post of like, hey, X, Y, and Z has happened. I am devastated. I'm not okay. Trying to make a human connection to someone to help her process that. I feel like this teaches us a little bit of a lesson of how the media can just be a little bit just seeking for attention too. you know, like you have this image of this woman who's literally going through hell. And they're literally saying, look how much of a freak she is. Mm -hmm. And then it comes out and she's like, but I'm human too. And it, it, you have to stop and think about these things because we want to giggle, we want to laugh, and we want to go and be like, what the heck? Yeah. You all are messed up, but really, maybe she's not. 
Well, who knows? I mean, and she lived in a household, right? Chad Daybell was her father. Who knows what she dealt with? Do we blame victims who are raised in cults? We have to also, you know, think about that and how Emma Daybell was raised. There are all these stories that have come out with Chad. Remember telling um, telling Tammy that his, that her grandmother visited him, the spirit of her grandmother visited him and told him that she needed to get back to work. Yeah, that's like, not crazy. And that she, you know, he was always demanding that she do stuff and listen and submit. I don't think that many people took into account the entirety of the picture behind Emma Daybell. But, you know, we could be wrong, too. Maybe she's in with it in chat. Who knows? I highly doubt it. Right. Until that comes out, I'm going to say that probably not. Hopefully not. Now, if you recall, both Tammy and Emma worked at Central Elementary School. Tammy as a librarian and Emma as a teacher. In a June 2020 interview with Garna Mejia of KSL, Tammy's close friend and co-worker Mandy Fowler talked about how she saw Tammy the day before she died. She said that she was distant and even a little bit frustrated, which was completely unlike her. She said that normally she and Tammy talked about books, Tammy suggested books, or they just talked about their fam- family and friends. And she said that Tammy just made it clear she did not want any conversation at all and that it was bizarre. The next morning, she said the news was beyond shocking that Tammy died because Tammy was healthy, completely healthy, completely normal. She said that it, w- it just shook the entire school. And the day after Tammy's death, the staff at Central Elementary rallied behind Emma to support her in processing and dealing, you know, grieving over her mom's passing. Now, Mandy Fowler and another friend told KSL that Emma expressed some concern, quote, about the state in which they found Tammy Daybell's body. Apparently, Tammy Daybell had pink foam coming out of her mouth. Alex Cox also had foam coming from his mouth when he expired. And Emma wasn't the only person concerned about Tammy. Remember, Melanie Gibb, who, as most of you know, we do not trust or particularly care for. I don't like her. No, we get so much hate for that on YouTube, guys, every time we we discuss Melanie Gibb. But I don't care. I don't like her. Remember, she secretly recorded the, that one call between her, Chad, and Lori. And this was after the children were missing and Melanie had already reached out to police. So like Court TV did for this article, let's revisit this conversation. Now, in this conversation, Chad and Lori were likely in Hawaii and Melanie called them. And Chad, of course, answered the phone, hello, sweet Melanie, which is so gross. Hello, sweet Melanie. <laughs> you sound I like can't. salad fingers. I'm here for your children, sweet Melanie. <laughs> Ugh. Well, I mean, at least someone would be because Melanie's not there for her own kids. <laughs> no, but that's a, co- but, um, <laughs> that's a topic for another day. So Melanie Gibb says, quote, and this is midway through their conversation, quote, I feel very understanding of what's really going on, Lori. And I believe that I believe that you have been deceived by Satan. I believe that he has tricked you. And I just I don't believe that what you're doing is correct. I just don't. I mean, Tammy dies and then your husband died and then, and then he's missing and it just doesn't sound like God's plan to me. Just sounds, it gives me a gut feeling. Like in my gut, it feels weird. It isn't right. I don't have peace about it. I never have felt 100% peace about, like always felt a little weird in my stomach about all these things. And then Chad took the phone and he said, I just want to testify that I, I know Tammy and then it's unintelligible, and the conspiracy theories. My sister-in-law's right behind it all, and I hope you're not being influenced by that dark being. That dark being, (laughs) wow. Melanie Gibbs said, I don't know who she is. I'm sorry. You said your sister-in-law? I don't even know her. And then Chad replied, quote, I know, but she's coming up with the same type of theories, and it's just not true. My own children were there. They testified that Tammy had been getting weaker and sick, and I begged her to go to the doctor. There's, she just, her heart was failing her. She was physically falling apart, and she hates doctors, and she just passed away. That's how it happened. My son Garth was right there with me the whole time. My kids were at the house within 20 minutes of her passing. There were two coroners. They checked her out right there on the bed. All these conspiracy theories just make me sick to my stomach, just absolutely sick. I know I've been told for years that Tammy would pass away at a young age. I had no idea that Lori would even be a part of my life. I just knew that my life had two segments and that I know Tammy's on a special mission and she's with my kids. She's visited them. Just there's so much, Melanie, that you just have to have faith. 
And this is not just some sort of master plan. There's no way that Lori and I could have ever come up with this. So what was weird is that it was like she was trying to like fake not knowing this person for the police. You know, it was it was fake. It just felt so fake. When Even I though she them. really didn't know her. Yeah, it was just like her tone, you know, it threw me off. I think that's probably what ch- what also tipped Chad and Lori off to the fact that they were possibly under surveillance, being recorded, or, you know, that Melanie was no longer on their side, basically. Melanie is not on anyone's side, is what I'm learning. <laughs> Certainly not for her kids. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is. it was a bizarre call, but Emma Daybell said that there's a lot of misinformation in, in the news about Tammy's passing. I even read one article where they claimed that Tammy was on the ground, like she had fallen, like she was she was found deceased on the ground. And then now it's in the bed. It's very curious that Chad seemingly knew exactly when she died. You know, in this conversation, quote, my kids were at the house within 20 minutes of her passing. So was he there? I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's just there. If, if you if you read between the lines, it's still shysty and it is, is still confusing. And I feel like Chad has made a couple slip ups. But he's not knows? very bright. He is not bright. He acts like he was a quarterback for a football <laughs> team and he was only the head against a helmet. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> not an actual player. <laughs> no, no, not at all. He couldn't, he couldn't even get that far. <laughs> I don't know, guys. It's really bizarre. I did not wake up this morning with the expectation that Emma Daybell would be talking to Court TV. So there's that. I don't know if any of you have been watching Nancy Grace. Everyone knows how we feel about Nancy Grace. However, she did have everyone's favorite nutto, Julie Rowe, on to talk about the case a couple days ago. And Julie Rowe, I don't know how many wardrobe changes she had, but she did confess and say, and say that Emma visits Chad frequently huh. in jail. So Emma is visiting her father frequently in jail. Now, Jackie, let's say roles were reversed and this happened to your family. And it is likely that your dad killed two freaking minor children and orchestrated a lot of stuff. Would you be visiting him in, in jail? As a teacher? No. Even if it was your father? Um, I feel like, okay, look, I'm realistic. You know, me personally, I'm realistic. So when you ask me that question, I'd be like, I probably would only, I would still keep a distance and just do periodical visits. And that would be it. You know, you know, it's very hard to cut family out even when they are monsters. And that's why, you know, I just can't fathom situations like Dennis Rader, BTK, and his daughter. His daughter said that he was a very strict father, but a loving, doting, amazing father. And look what he turned out to be. One of the worst serial killers in American history. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she wrote a book about this, and which I still need to read. Thank you. This is like my reminder to myself. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I can't fathom. And I, I consistently try to put myself in their shoes of what if you found out that your dad was Samuel Little, you know, the America's literal worst serial killer in history or BTK, or someone like that? Like, would you go visit them in prison? Or how about someone like Chad Daybell, who, amazing father by all accounts, loving, close-knit family, and he possibly brutally butchered a young girl and her younger brother, even if he just buried them. He is still just as guilty if he even... He knew they were on the property, period. There's no way he I didn't mean, know. Raccoon text, a potential gunshot. You know, okay, there's all so these much. all these cover ups, man. Yeah. Like it's just so obvious. Being like, I shot a raccoon <laughs> when they're nocturnal. Um and then the FBI's like, wait, they're nocturnal. Okay, you're weird. Yeah. And then, you know, and then we, we're trying to piece together how Tylee died, and I, I think he she they she they probably shot her, man. Tylee reminds me so much of myself as a teenager of like the smart ass talk back, you know, kind of like sassy. Nothing changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I really, really, really am devastated by what happened to Tylee. And I do, I honestly believe that we may never know what actually happened to Tylee. It makes me mad. Had she grown up under normal circumstances and not having Lori as a mom, I think she would have been something in this world. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Lori just when you hear the stories and family friends and then, you know, as much as we hated, hated the fact that the other podcast pulled all of the divorce paperwork, remember? God. Between, like, Cheryl Wheeler and... Um, Screw you guys. Yeah, like, that. no offense, but, like, fuck you. Because that, like, some things just are irrelevant to and you're point. just getting you're and you're just meddling in some someone else's heartache and selling it to people. Yeah. I know some of you bought that stuff and you just want to know and you... you you know, you want to do that? That's fine. But 
to sell it and they'd be peddling it like that is so it's not relevant to the case by the way you know and there are people who have no relevance connection to this case whatsoever who are now being hounded by people all over the internet just because another podcast decided to you know, take that the one, court documents from the divorce yeah that one party happened to be married you know well they misrepresented it by abbreviating some sentences in meticulous ways from the court documents and yeah. like if you want to see more you gotta pay <laughs> yeah exactly and so it's just dirty and uh, i don't know It's going to be very, very curious how all of this plays out. We hope to be there for the trial when it actually starts and happens. I think that we're going to have a lot of start and stop dates based on things that are happening and and come out. But depends on vaccinations, too. Yeah. And someone left a comment on our YouTube. And I please forgive me. I don't have my YouTube up currently asking us if we knew that Colby and his wife had moved to Rexburg. Now, granted, I have not watched their channel since I saw that they announced their move. But yes, we have been aware that Colby and his wife uh, did move to Rexburg. Do any of you know why that is? Is that because they want to be closer to where the trial will be happening? That was kind of my initial assumption on that. But to answer your question, yes, we are aware that Colby has moved to Rexburg. Um, I want to give a shout out to a very special patron. Are you ready, Robin? I'm ready. Um, her name starts with a K and it ends in a T. And she has some big truck nuts, you guys. She does. Huge truck nuts. Yeah. And if you don't know what that is, that's okay. You don't want to know. But KT has the biggest that I've ever met. I, I think I fulfilled my quota on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, so she's probably smiling right now and I'm probably going to get like a really nasty message but that's to you tuts <laughs> so we want as always to hear from you guys what did you think of Emma Daybell's audio I mean again it was only like a minute long a minute and a half long content but what did you think how do you feel about Emma Daybell does any of this information the reddit post does that make you feel any differently towards her Do you still think that she is potentially in it, supporting Chad, part of the cult? I mean, there have been so many wildly conflicting theories about this case since the very beginning. So as always, we want to hear from you. Tying it up, guys, that is it for our Lori Vallow Emma Daybell update. Part two of our Unmasking a Serial Killer, the Pamela Hupp story, will be coming out on Monday. And I'm so excited. I have not been this excited about a case in forever because it is actually getting a Hollywood movie starring Renee Zellweger as Pam, as Pam Hupp. What? Yeah. And if you guys are not familiar with this case and you are into Lori Vallow, let me tell you, you are going to be blown away. Blown away. (laughs) Check it out. Other than that, do we have anything? Um, I want to know what everyone's winter ritual is. I mean, winter is kind of one of those times of the year, right? Some people start feeling blue. Some people start feeling anew. And some people like drinking cozy, like coffee or... Hot chocolate. Yeah, I want to know what you're putting in your cups. I want to know what you do in the winter. Help me be happy in the winter. because I, I <laughs> she, she has the sad, guys. Guys, it's like during the pandemic, I can't like go out and go shopping like I used to and stuff. So like in the winter... I I usually kill the, you know, my daytime hours that way. And I go to the gym early, really early morning, usually in the winter. And then I don't have to worry about freezing to death in the garage. But now without all the sunlight, I'm like, man, I'm feeling blue. So get me out of this blues. Tell me what to do. What do you do to make yourself happy in the wintertime? You know, I lived in Portland, Maine for like 10 years and I loved it. I am a snowbird. I would move to Alaska. I would move to the Arctic Circle if I could. And there was Wi-Fi. So see, if it was snowing, I could go snowboarding. And that's what makes me happy, too. And I don't have the opportunity. You guys. Sure as hell not in Tennessee. So, well, I could I could. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just end it there anyway. So again, guys, thank you for listening to us talk about Emma Daybell and the Lori Bellow case. It was a very exciting update. Again, if you are enjoying the show, like the show, love the show, please support us on Patreon. Again, for as little as $3 a month, you can get cool stuff like a sticker, postcards of the month from where we pick a case of of the month, and then we send you a postcard from that location, a physical postcard from that location, and then do an episode on it. T-shirts, swag. Occasional insider information on the Lori Vallow case, occasionally. Occasionally. And yeah, overall, it's a really cool community and we love each and every single one of you. So check us out there. And again, if you haven't watched Crime Scene Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel on Netflix, 
You need to see it. See if, us, you mean. <laughs> if for no other reason than to see the We Saw the Devil logo pop up on that screen three times. And speak words. So again, guys, thank you so much for listening. Until next crime.